is now. Hit that like button. It's Joel and Frankie, bro. Como estas, man? Um, you know, people are wondering, bro, what's the verdict, man? Are you okay, bro? What's going on? Bro, I'm alive, bro. I had a little minor injury, a minor incident with my heart, bro, and they took me to the outside hospital. And a lot of people were saying rumors that I OD'd, I did this. I went out because my, I went, I did faint, but my heart went out on me. I had like a, like a, like an anxiety attack, and I told myself, man, I'm not feeling good. And I went down, and when I went, I guess I went out, and he called man down. By the time I came, I was waking up, and they put me in the gurney, the ambulance came, and everything took me out. And they said, hey, by law, we got to take you out outside hospital because something happened to your heart. I went outside hospital to Bakersfield. Bakersfield cleared me, and he says, hey, you're going to have to stay here just till nighttime. At 12 o'clock, I came back to the prison, and they said, hey, you got to go quarantine because you went out. If you go out more than six hours to a community hospital, automatically I quarantine because of the COVID. And I've been, I've been, for all this time, I was in quarantine, and now I'm, I'm in orientation. I'm waiting to get classified. But I'm good, bro. I'm good. I'm ready. I'm ready to talk to my fans. I'm ready to talk to my, my, my followers, bro. I, I want to get out there in the air. Hey, man, I'm, I'm so glad to hear you're all right, bro. Sincerely, man, I'm glad you're okay, man, you know. But we've all been waiting for the Conejo show, bro, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, <laughs> let I'm gonna, <laughs> you know. I'm going to go ahead and let you do your thing, bro. The, 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 you know, the floor is yours, my boy. Go ahead and do your thing. Okay, this is Conejo coming at you live. And the reason I'm coming at you, we're going to talk about the structure of the Mexican mafia, of the state and the feds, because you're going to remember, I was housed around the Carnales in the state, and then I went to Pelican Bay, and then I went to the feds in 1991. So when I got to the feds, I, I noticed that as soon as the, the, I hit MDC, M, uh, MCC, I was with Gato from San Diego, Carnal Gato, I was with Jesse Moreno, I was with, with Richie and all them. Well, but as soon as I hit the feds, I seen the structure of the, of the, of the M, it was different. But I didn't really get to really touch more into the rules until when I got to Leavenworth, Kansas. When I got to Leavenworth, Kansas, that's when I first got there. As soon as I get there, old man Gato, Richard Martinez, and I got from the originals from back in the, back in the, you could understand, back in the, when they, when they, when they structured and made the M in the, in, in the 50s, it was called the Mariposa. The Mariposa was, you know, like a, a Mariposa is a butterfly. You know how it's a, it's, it turns into a butterfly? Well, anyways, they, they, they dropped that name because, you know, the butterfly is kind of like a delicate name for a, for a, ma, a mob name. But anyways, that was the original. They were called the, the original Mariposas of the M, which Gato was part of that too. So when I get to Leavenworth, as soon as I get to Leavenworth, Gato tells me, go out to the yard. Well, when you go out to the yard, I notice that the structure is different because in the state, most of the carnales were locked up in the shoe. And they're shooting out orders to the prisons, to like the like the like the like the, the crew chiefs and the autos like the kashar collars now to do things for them because they're in the shoe. They're locked up 24 hours a day in the shoe. While over here in the in, in the feds, everybody's walking the main line. You have carnales right there with you, Willie Bobo, Campeon, you know, different carnales, Gato, uh, 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 Termite, different carnales in the yard with you, walking with you. Well, as soon as I went out, I got there. Gato tells me, go to the yard. So he shot word, and I went out to the yard because Gato was in C block, and I was in D block. So, you know, we the blocks are different. So when I went out to the yard, man, the ones that were out there was Black Bob, Black Bob, Chavetas, uh, 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 Rolling Berry, and, 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 uh, and Mangas. Well, as soon as I get there, El, El, El Gato said, mira, I'm going to introduce you to my chief, my, chief my, my, my crew chief. And I didn't know... At that time, because he never told me that he was going to put me in that in that position, because there was another crew chief that was running his 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 crew, and that was that was that was homeboy Lalo from San Diego. But I didn't know. As soon as I walk up, he introduced me to him, and the first thing they say, you got your PSI, and your PSI it's called personal special identification, and the PSI is like it tells you every information about you. Like what kind of case you took, how much time you got, if you told on anybody, how much property you own, how much money you got in the bank. You gotta remember this is the FBI does this this background check. So the PSI is like it's a packet. It's like maybe thirty pages, fifteen pages. Some guys got a hundred pages because they're they're billionaires in, in in the feds. Well, anyways, 
when 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 termite asked me, you got this call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. And that termite asked me, do you got your PSI? You know, Gato spoke up for me. He says, hey, he you don't need to see his PSI because I know him. I was with him in MCC in San Diego in the federal when we first picked up his case. So I know everything about him. So I'm co-signing for him. Plus, he's going to be my crew chief. See, because you got to remember, every carnal in the feds, because they're out there with us, you got you got a crew of vatos with you. And let's say a carnal likes you. Like, let's say a carnal like Tony. They say, Tony, I want you to run with us. I want you to be part of my crew. And most of them is dudes that run from different areas, like Los, San Diego, different area codes. So you had a crew of vatos that were your soldados. And most of the feds, most of the vatos that were sureños, we're already down with the business. So, you know, we already had strength and, and, and power in, in numbers because when people see in every prison, in every prison that you're at, you see who are the ones that are willing to go out there and kill somebody, who are the ones that are willing to go and extort people, who are the ones that really go attack people, and who's the muscle in the yard. Well, every prison defense Almost all the organization, the Russian mob, the Italian mob, the, the cartel, the Cali cartel, the Medellin cartel, well, they seen that the Emir from Califas was the power, the muscle. So when they seen that, they said, this is who's going to hire to do our hits. Okay. He said, this is the time we're going to hire to do our hits. And those were, when they seen that, and and I, and, I, and, 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 and when I came on, he told me that termite. said, okay, you how to respect me. Hey, uh, hey, carnal, it's expensive. Because termite is a younger carnal. He's not in Gato's, Gato's uh, uh, level. Gato's a, a, a captain. Termite at that time was just a soldado, MM member. So when that happens, he tells him, hey, look, this is Roland. This is, this is, this is Black Bob. This is, this is termite. This, and he goes, look, Roland, come here. He says, any time that Conejo gets a hold of you, any time he tells it relates to you, where he gets to a wheel or a phone call or whatever, that's like me speaking to you. You serious? All right. How much you want to recall? You want to tell it? Hey, Tony. Hey. Tony. I got to get off. Sorry, that time. Okay. This is Conejo coming at you live again. I'm finishing off my story about the Mexican Mafia and the structure that I noticed it was different from the state and the feds. Because remember, I did state time and did all the shoes and was around all the all the, all the MA all my life. But at the same time, when I got to the feds, I noticed a whole different rules, a whole different structure of the way they do things, the MA and the feds. Because the MA and the feds, you remember, the, the MA and the state just gives out orders and has people do things in the street or in prison, wherever, because they, they're the ones who is the muscle. Now, I'm going back to where I left off my story when I, when I, when I came to the feds in Leavenworth, Kansas, and old man got the Richard Martinez. Richard Martinez is, 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 a, is a capo. He's a captain of the Emmy. I first met him back in the 80s, like 85. So when I got, old, when I got to MCC, he was right there fighting his case when I came to the federal building. Well, when I get to Leavenworth, I get there, and he embraces me, give me a hug and everything, and he goes, go to the yard after dinner, because it was already count time when we got there. So he goes, after, after, after dinner, go to the yard, I'm going to see you out there so I can introduce you to the brothers over here, because there's a lot of brothers that you don't know about that were carnales from back in the 60s. So when I got there, yeah, uh, he introduced me to Roland Berry, he introduced me to, to a, 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 a Bruiser, Black Bob, Chaveta, Mangas, all them dudes, and at that time, he tells Mangas, Black Bob, and, and, and Roland Berry that, look, from now on, that now that you know Conejo, and, and he told Termite, now that you, Conejo, now that you know Conejo, he's going to be my new crew chief. Because I didn't know at that time, I guess when Lalo got out, like he, they found him dead over in Tijuana. Somebody killed him over there. Or I don't know. Maybe they ordered to kill him. I don't know if that time I did but I didn't know that, and Gato didn't tell me that he was going to do that. So he says, from now on, if you get any word or any letter, any way of communication, and Conejo tells him, if you carnal is something for me, then it's like me telling you. And then you go, okay. And then Termite at that time, to ask, ask him, hey, well, does he got his PSI with him? The PSI report is what's called, a per, uh, it's your personal special identification. And, uh, and it's like when you go to the state, in the state, when you drive up to a yard, 
the first thing the homies ask you is, do you got your 128G? A 128G in the state is basically your your 128G, your committee action of when they classified you. And that just says rarely just a couple of things. But in the feds, your PSI report, is it tells you everything. I'm talking about when you were born, what property you owned, what deal you took on your case. Not only that case, cases from before, how much how much money you're worth, uh, who you are in, the, in your organization, and what level, things like that. So so when Termite asked me, I said, yeah, I got in the cell, and, and I didn't bring it out with me. Got those say, look, Carnal, and Termite is way younger than them. So at that time, he told me, Carnal, check this out. I know you want to see his PSI. Later on, you can see it, but I'll co-sign for the, for the brother right here. I'll co-sign for him because I know personally we're an MCC together. So... I, I, he said, okay, that, that's good. That's good enough right there. If you know him, he goes, yeah. I, I was with him over there. When, when he picked up his bank robbers, he went from there, and then he went to NBC. And he goes, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I remember he was in the, I was in the oil when he was in NBC. And he goes, yeah. But I, and, 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 and so he said, okay, then you don't have to see it. He never, no, so nobody really ever seen my PSI. But anyways, I was telling him, I got it right there. You guys want to see it. But that's the first thing they ask you when you drive up to a yard in the feds is, do you got your PSI? Once you're PSI and they read it and you're clear or you're good and that you didn't tell on nobody or you didn't do nobody dirty in the street, even in the feds, because you got to remember, now at that time, there, there wasn't no SNY yards. But now, because later on when I was almost going to get out, the first SNY just started coming that they were checking on that too. Well, anyways, uh, uh, the reason I was telling you the different structures because over there, when somebody goes... And let's say, for instance, uh, Gapa wants somebody hit. He just doesn't say, hey, go hit this dude. He'll go like this. He'll say, oh, no, get the fierros nerdy. Let's go. Help me out. I'm going to go hit this dude. This dude did me wrong. He goes with you. The carnal son of him goes with you, and you go with him, or he picks a couple of dudes to go with him to go help him. Over here in the state, the 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 what they do is they're, they're, most of them back then, you got to remember, they were in the hole, so a lot of them they just got kicked out just recently, but a lot of them were actually just ordering things to get done. Now, when I came in the system in the 80s, oh, yeah, old Folsom and Queen Mosset, all the Carnales were out there. It was like over 200-some MM members out there, BGF, AB, all that was out there. But when I went to the Fed, the Fed, everybody walks the main line. So, like I was telling you, the story is a different structure. Once your PSI was clear and you're good, then they put you on the payroll. The, the, the Sureños that are there, most Sureños that are over there, it's mostly all dudes that got indicted for cases that they did things for homies, carnales in the street, like collecting rent, extortion, kidnapping, or whatever. Whatever they're doing, most of them got racketeered, or most of them picked up a case that they were working for one of the carnales in the, uh, in the, from the M out there in the street. Or sometimes, the, you know how they come and they just lock every, the whole the racketeer, the whole neighborhood, and lock everybody up. Well, anyways... This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. Once you get to the feds and your PSA is clear, you get put what's called, you get put on the payroll. Because over in the, in the feds, we got the, 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 the Dali cartel under our wing, and most of the, the mafiosos from the, the Tijuana crew, the, the, the cartel over there, and some of the, fa, the, the, the la, la Familia. And then when the third crew, we got them under our wing. Well, we take care of them. Well, we don't, we don't, we, what we do is we do all their dirty work for them. If somebody drives up and they need them hit, the AM is the one who does it. Because every yard we go, they go to, you got to remember, they got Russian mob, Italian mob, uh, even his, his real mob, all that. But they don't, got the, they don't got the power and the strength like we do. They're not, they're not, yeah, they might be in the street and go kill somebody, just shoot somebody in the street, but they don't got the balls to go actually go pick up a knife and stab somebody or kill them in the cell or whatever. They can't do that. They, they, they don't see it in them. So we do that. I mean, we were raised doing that in all, all these yards in the state system just for dudes that are doing things wrong or dudes that not paying their bills. You know, homies tell you, hey, fool, hit this fool. He owes me, he owes me money. Just give him a little stabbing. So that'll be a warning. So he paid, he'll pay me, and then they double it on you. So we were raised doing that. So when we got up there, the, 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 the carnal is seeing that, we got a gang of soldados, so this is what we're going to use. We're going to do a lot of their dirty work, different organizations, and we'll do their dirty work, and they'll pay us. So that's how it is. So every month, 
like the Cali cartel, the the the, the, the cartels from me, from from the from the, the uh, Arianos and, and La Familia, they pick. We give them names. Like the homies termite always was in charge of it. They're not termite. He'll give them like maybe a hundred names because most of the time, in the, like you go to Leavenworth, the more far you go in the in, in the middle of California, the less California car gets, and it's all raza. You don't do. They're not. We're not paying everybody like Galacho Mexicano. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. The only ones in the payroll is just Sureño shot callers or, or, or Sureño soldados or, 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 or vatos that were getting ready to get made and the books were closed. And you get paid and you get paid $250 in your books and that's your money to buy all your stuff you need like your coffee or whatever you need. But there's rules that they tell you, look, that money you get, they don't want you go fuck go go trading that money for dope or, or, or whatever. If they catch you doing that, or oh, you're gonna get a you're gonna get a beating and they're gonna take you off the payroll. And and the, the the number one rule of that is when you get put on the payroll, that's to show everybody in the yard or, okay, that's to show everybody in the yard that if something happens with one of us from California it doesn't matter where you are. You could be asleep or you can be at work or you can be in, in your cell. You better get there. You better try and get there. Because when, when we show that power to other organizations that we're united and we, we attack, man, everywhere you go in the feds, they, 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 our respect is gained ten times. Like anytime you tell, like don't mess with anybody from California because they're all coming at you. They already know. The Cali mob, the Russian mob. So that's why they hire us as muscle to do things. Now, I'm getting this Conejo coming at you. I'm finishing off my story. Remember, I was telling you that the structure of the M in, in California, the structure of the M in the feds is different for the simple reason that the M over the members do not use Sureños to go do their work, their dirty work, without them going with you. Like if somebody's going to, if one of them sends you to do something, they're going to tell you like this. Hey, Conejo, let's go, let's go. I'm going to go hit this fool and go with me, carnal. And he's a New Mexican Mafia member. He's taking you with you because over there they believe in the old rules of when they first created the Mexican Mafia, the Amen. You got to remember it was called the Mariposa back in the, in, the, in the 50s and 60s. They changed that name because, you know, Mariposa, a, butterf a butterfly doesn't sound right. But now some of the dudes are tacking it on like Mike Boo, uh, 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 Chapo from Maravilla. They're, they're, they're tattooing the mariposa, the butterfly, but it's the, it's the Aztec butterfly. That's what's when they're, they're tacking on. Well, when I was in the feds, like I was telling you, everybody gets put on, on, on a payroll. And when you get put on the payroll, once your PSI is clear, then you're going to get $250 in your books. And that money alone is just to buy all the things you need, like your coffee or your clothing, your your your. Because over they sell they sell righteous suits, like Nike suits, uh, 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 different kind of suits you put on. You know, like nice suits where you do, they sell that in the store. The store is different. It's not like over here. Over there you can buy radios in the store. You can buy, uh, you know, I mean, uh, tennis shoes in the store. You, it's like they got aisles, and the homies be pushing your cart. And he goes, these tennis shoes right here, and show you through the glass windows. Yeah, that one. You know what I mean? They got different kinds. Well, anyways, you'll get you'll get what's called a care package. Over here in the state, you get a care package, maybe a little bit of coffee, some some cosmetics. Over here, you get a care package, man. You're gonna get like a hundred, maybe two hundred dollars uh, worth of stuff because you gotta remember, the feds, all the dudes, the head dudes, the the main dudes from the from the enterprises like the like, like the Russian mob, the Italian mob, you got billionaires over, you got corporations over, you got a lot of people white collar crimes. And the reason I'm explaining this to you is because the structure of even the Mexican mafia is more, or they're more into education, but they're they're trying to educate themselves, but in a way to beat the system, like in other words, to to to. Uh, this call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. Create how to make money. Like over there, I'll give you an example. Like I told you, Gato from, from, from San Diego, he used to do legal work. So when you get people's legal work and you read everything in there and you see that, okay, this dude's from the Cali cartel and you're just helping him out and you see that other cartels have a contract on your life, then you can use that information as a way, a leverage to get into the dude's brain, to put a seed in him and say, hey, you know, we just got word from so-and-so, this other prison, this dude got a contract on your life from Medellin Cartel, do you know him? And he's going to wonder where this dude get the information. 
but he he forgot that he gave you his paperwork where it states right there other other cartels that got a hit on him. So so you're using that information to beat this dude and tell him, look, as long as you're with us, that's we're gonna take care of you. Nothing gonna happen to you. And that's how we use the muscle of the hand man to take care of them. So once we took care of one of them, and this started in MDC years ago, once we took care of one of them, every time another one drives up, because you got to remember, them two cartels in Colombia, they're killing each other. I'm talking about family members have been killing each other for years. So when they come into a federal system in a penitentiary and they're housed there but they're enemies, they can't do nothing because they know they got to go through us. And like the Medellin will check with the dudes from other places. And say, hey, who sees dudes from, from the Mexican Mafia and Califas? Well, you don't want to mess with them dudes. Them dudes will put a hurting on you. Them dudes will smash you. Them dudes will, them dudes will kill you. So they, 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 don't even, they won't even disrespect the dudes from the, from the Cali because the Cali are the ones we're taking care of. So that's why we let them do whatever. That's how we tell them. We tell them like this, look, you can do whatever you want in the yard. Anytime you run into one of these dudes in the yard and they're giving you a problem, you let us know. And we'll, and the first thing the first thing that Lato does, he'll send an example. You too, you turn mine and him, go hit that dude. And we'll go and just bang, 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 hit him like twenty times. Just you show him, you better not disrespect nobody from the Cali that's working that's under our wing. Or anybody. It's not just Cali. There's dudes from Mexico, there's dudes from other organizations too. Like there's a lot of white collar crime dudes that are legitimate white collar crime dudes like me. Let's say for instance I'm in the yard. And I see a white-collar crime dude that I'm actually going to school with every day, and I get to meet him every day, and I'm talking to him, and he looks like a straight nerd because he's a white-collar guy. But I investigate and check his background and see what he's in here for, and this dude beat the government for like $142 million. And this dude's walking there, so I'm saying, hell no, we're going we're gonna to extort this dude. So I bring it to the, I bring it to like Gato or Black Bob or one of the older carnales. I tell him, look, this fool, this and this. Okay, then we're going to play a, we're going to play a, it's like a cat and mouse game. We're going to scare him to where he's going to feel that he did something wrong and he's going to go to you and you're going to strain it out and you're going to tell him, look, the only way I can strain it out is if you look out for us, every six months you're going to give us $2,000. And that ain't nothing to with the money he's got out there that they, the government never got. He's got it somewhere overseas in some Swiss account, some number accounts that the government's never going to get. They're never going to get that money. And that money is there until he gets out because most white collar crimes, they only get like five, four years, and they're on the streets, and they're set for life. You know what these guys do? They, 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 they come, they come in, and... And, and and they set up or they, they, they do white collar crimes and they set up with the with the with the with the bankers firm. They tell them, Look, every six months I want ten thousand dollars in my books and I want another ten thousand to wherever I want to send it to and they do that just to live in the prison because they know that in five years they get out, they got all this money. So we get them, and boom, we got them, and now we're taking care of them so we can do whatever in the yard and everybody knows we'll send word out there, look, that dude right there, don't mess with them. Man has got him under his wing. And everybody in the yard will respect that. And they'll say, okay, no, nah, I don't want, I don't, I don't want to mess with them because they, them dudes will come and stab you. Now, the reason I'm explaining this to you is, so, you got to remember when I talk to you, I talk to all of you raw because I want you to feel the story. But that's not my point. I'm not, gra- I'm not glamorizing, I'm not glamorizing that lifestyle. I'm just explaining to you to get a hold of my story so you can hear me. But my main thing in my story is to help you change your life because. I'm trying to show you that all this is not worth it because if I would have another opportunity to say, hey, can you, can I do this over again? I would never come to prison, man. I would be the most nerd in the, I would be the most nerd in school. I would do all my homework and I would, I would graduate from high school and I would never be a criminal because every day, sometimes I sit in my house and the times when I'm alone in my house, I sometimes get on my knees and I cry, man. I cry. Tears come out of my eyes because I'm so tired of being in prison. I'm serious. I'm talking to you seriously. I cry because I'm so tired. Yes, when I got a cell, I don't show that because I'm, I, I got to show I live a standard. I got to show my character. But when I'm by myself and I'm, I'm, I don't got a cell, believe me, I let out those tears and let out those tears because I'm tired of being I'm, so I'm alone and I'm lonely. And, and sometimes it's aching my bones and it's hurting me, man, all these years in prison. It's not worth it, man. That's why I tell you these stories. Now I'm going to change the subject because I need your help. Because... I'm going to be going to board next year, and remember, whatever you can donate to my cash app, Free Conejo, F-R-E-E-C-O-N-E-J-O, whatever you can donate to by next year, 
There's a dude that just went to board. He just got out yesterday. Man, whatever you can donate to my cause, I want please donate. And I want to give a shout out to my boy, Javi. I got a boy named Javi. He be looking out for me. He always stays in contact with me. When I had a heart attack, he was always making sure I was all right, t uh, emailing me in my tablet. Man, they're telling me all the latest gossip of, of what's, what, 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 uh, 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 what they were saying out there in my channel and all that because he's a good friend of mine. I, 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 I met him through this channel, and Javi's a good man. And my brother David, my brother David, David too, my brother, he'd be looking out for me. He's always right there thinking for me and telling me, hey, bro, how you doing? How you feeling? Man, when, when, when I got that heart attack, bro, these were the two dudes that stayed with me, always looking out for me. That's why I'm giving them a shout-out, because they deserve that. Now, going back to my story, I got to get back to the story. Okay, like I tell you, man, when I'm by myself in the cell, when I don't got them, I swear to God, I enjoy the time. Like, when I was over here quarantined, I enjoyed that time because I can get in, I can get in real grips of my own self and my own true feelings because I could I could let loose, man. I'll sit down on my knees and I'll pray and I'll cry, man, because sometimes it's so many years of being in prison. Sometimes I think, man, how 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 crazy can a man be to be in prison since 1984 and, and it doesn't affect him? Man, that that's not that's not human. A person that's humane will feel that. It's just like me. When I'm by myself, and I don't got a cell, and I look at a movie, like Old Yeller, or a movie that'll make me cry, man, I cry, man. And those little signs show me that I'm a sane person, that I'm a person of love, man, that I got love in my heart. And I think that's why God has stayed so close to me, where he himself touches me through movies or whatever to show me that even though I've been in prison all my life, I'm a humane person. I'm a man, a, a, a good man. Because if you don't, if you see a movie and it doesn't affect you, or, and it's one of those sad movies and you don't you don't sit down and the true feelings come out and cry, then, then something's wrong with you, man. You're not normal. And I learned that from being in prison because in prison, you can learn, you, you start being antisocial. You isolate yourself and you isolate those feelings and that's not normal. You can't, that's not normal, a normal human being. So you got to get in grips with yourself and understand that. Tony. Tony. I was golden.